right, so we're going to get started uh, with learning how to make a book from a sheet of paper. All you need is a piece of paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half hot dog style, um, which just means the long ways. Now I'm going to make sure I have matched the corners and then I'm going to open up my page and then I'm going to fold it hamburger style. So I'm just going to open just to show you that there are four sections in here um, and that's what you're looking for. But our next step actually needs us to return to the hamburger style and we're going to lift one side of the paper up. Um, so it's technically a really large manifold. So I'm going to turn it to the side so you can see that one side is folded up like a fan and then we're going to turn it over and flip, fold the other side like a fan as well. So now when I open up my paper, um, what you're going to notice is that there are eight sections. And I've drawn them out here so that you can see it a little better. Um, there are eight sections that are folded out on our paper. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate this next part with this pre done one. So you're going to fold your paper in half hamburger style again. And as you can see, I'm drawing an X at the apex in which you are going to cut. And so you're going to cut the folded side and not the, um, the loose side. And you're going to cut just to that little X right there. Um, and so I'll show you on my actual piece. So again, I'm cutting the folded side just to about the middle point, which you can't see on my paper. Um, again, it's the folded side. And then what's gonna happen is that it's already naturally gonna start becoming the shape that we need it to be. And so um, we're gonna fold it hot dog style and we're gonna pinch it from the outside into the middle and then we're gonna fold it down. So I'm gonna show you one more time. I'm opening my page, folding it hot dog style and then I'm pushing the corners inward to create an X and then folding it down. And there you have it, you guys, a book from one piece of paper. Um, you can make many of these and put them together by sewing or stapling, it's up to you. Um, this is just like a really fun little sketchbook to make. All right, for our next activity, I'm going to show you guys how to make uh, another kind of book. And this one involves a little bit of sewing, but it is great because you can make it whatever size you'd like. So I'm just using random paper that I have. I have this old shopping bag um, and some regular computer paper. Anything that you have is fine, actually. If you have nicer paper, go ahead and use it. Um, if you don't, that's fine. So I'm taking my regular computer paper because I only have one sheet of paper. Um, I'm going to cut it in half because I want my book to have lots of pages in them. So you can cut with scissors. I just tore it because I am lazy. <laughs> and so I have my two pieces of paper. We'll which will become my four pieces of paper. And I'm just going to also cut one from my other kind of paper. Um, again, this is a really great book because you can literally put anything you want in it. If you want a layer of fabric paper, sure, that's fine. As long as they're all roughly the same size. So here we go, I have three pieces of paper all ready to go and then I just need some string and um, that's all you really need for this exercise. The first step we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper in half and so I'm going to make three cuts um, because I want three holes for my three hole book. Um, if you have a hole puncher that's cool. If you do not um, just take a pair of scissors and you can cut out a hole like that by making little half circles. Um, it doesn't even have to be half circles. I find that if half circles are too difficult because you want to make sure they go through all three pages or all the pages that you're using, make a little tiny triangle cut and that would work just as well as long as the hole reaches through all the pages on the inside. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take my string, um, and I'm lucky that I have yarn, but it's really difficult to do this without a needle. And what if I don't have a needle? I'm gonna show you guys how to make something called an aglet. Now, an aglet is something that you find at the end of a shoelace, and it's something that is really helpful when you need to get something like yarn through a hole. What you're gonna need is a piece of masking tape or any kind of tape, again, whatever you have, maybe even an old sticker, and you're just going to wrap it around the end of the string to become our aglet. And I just really like to say the word aglet. Once I have covered my um, end with tape, I have a needle. And so I'm going to sew it from the outside of my book through the middle hole. Now I'm struggling a little bit, but here we go. Okay. And so I'm going to leave a tail and then I'm gonna sew from the middle on the inside of the book to one of the holes. It really doesn't matter which one you have because then I'm just gonna take it from the outside and I'm gonna sew it to the other hole. So I'm sewing it from the outside to the other hole. Now, remember there's a tail behind and that's what you want because our very last step is we are going to sew from the last hole through the middle again. So we start in the middle and we end in the middle and we're going to have two little tails that come out of the middle and those tails are gonna be tied. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just tying my two tails together. And if you notice, I tied it around the middle string and now I'm gonna cut off any extra parts and voila, we have our three hole book that is actually really useful because you can add pages whenever you want. And remember, I only used one sheet of computer paper and one piece of craft paper for this. So it became a four page book in no time. Remember, you can also add as many pages as you want to it later on. Um, that's the best part about it being tied. You can untie it and then retie it. A hardcover version of this, um, that's a little prettier and I'm, I'm just using the back of a cereal box and um, one of my uh, old drawings to make my cover. And so I am cut out my cereal box back and then I'm just gonna cover it in glue to attach my drawing. Always make sure uh, everything's the right size before you attempt something like this. So if you notice, my page is a little bit taller and a little bit shorter than the cover that I'm gonna use, and that's fine. I'm just gonna trim it down. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create a fancier cover. You can take your time and you can fold it up and glue it that way, or you can trim it. Um, gluing it up like that will make it a better finish um, and you can do it on both sides. I'm just gonna be lazy and cut it off. All right, and so now I have just made a hard version of my drawing. Um, I've just backed it with something sturdy and I am going to fold it in half to know what kind, what size I'm working with here. So I'm just folding it in half, making sure to match my corners and it's a little harder to fold, so take your time with this. And there we go, we have our cover. And so I'm going to fill this fancy book um, with some pages that I have. I drew on these. I'm only gonna use my drawn ones because I can just keep drawing on them. And you're welcome to trim it down. Um, I don't want to. I think having a little bit stick out is fine. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it just like we did our others. And remember, this is a thicker piece of paper, so it's gonna be harder to cut, but essentially I am doing my triangle cuts to make my three holes. And you can take your time with this. Um, you could even cut it separately doing the cover first because it's a thicker piece of paper and then the individual pages on the inside. So here I am just checking, making sure that all my cuts went all the way through to all the pages that I want to sew together. 
And so I'm ready for my next step. Now I'm going to start sewing, but as you can see, I've kind of run out of the yarn that I used in the last book. And so a good alternative, especially if you don't have any yarn to begin with, is plastic bag. Um, so I've stripped this plastic bag down to become yarn um, or string that I'm going to use to sew my book together. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to take a plastic bag and turn it into plastic string. And so I'm just taking any um, old shopping bag that I have. It's fun if you have a fun color, but you know, use what you have. And I'm going to cut off the bottom seam of the plastic bag. And so I'm using scissors and I'm just kind of gliding it across. Plastic cuts really easy, so it should be super simple. Now I'm gonna cut off the handle portion. So I'm going to take my scissors again, and I might have to both glide and chomp in order to get this to work, but here we go. So we're going to cut off across the top a straight line, and I'm just removing the handles. And there. Okay. So I'm going to open it up, and what you notice is now I have a giant plastic tube. Um, and so this is going to be our material for our plastic bag. Um, so I'm gonna lay it out flat, and then I'm going to start cutting across the bag, stopping about an inch and a half away from the edge. So here again, I'm gonna stop over there. Um, what you can do is you can draw a line if you're not confident that you'll stop at the same spot. Um, you can also measure out individually where to cut. Um, because I'm a professional, I'm going to just go ahead and start cutting. Um, so the cuts that I'm making, the strips that I'm cutting out, are about like an inch and a half. Um, I like to cut kind of wide for the plastic bags. And again, I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm stopping at a certain point. Um, the reason I cut them kind of wide is because the plastic stretches pretty thin and I like it to be kind of strong. So now I'm just going to go through and cut m as many strips as I can get out of this bag. Um, remembering to stop about an inch and a half away from the edge. So once I've stripped my plastic bag, um, I'm going to open it up and then expose the part that were not cut. And so this is a little hard to see, so I'm gonna take a marker and I'm going to draw out how we're going to cut this part of the bag. So I'm going to take my marker or to represent where we're gonna be cutting. We're gonna be cutting at a diagonal. And so let me draw out the lines for you to see. I'm gonna start off with the end and I'm going to cut that first one at a diagonal. And then for the next side, I'm gonna cut across at a diagonal. And I'm gonna continue doing this all the way up the whole side of that bag that was remained uncut. Remember you're cutting across at a diagonal to the strip next to it. And this is gonna make a little bit more sense later when you see us uh, ravel it up. So I'm gonna just continue cutting all the way to the end. And at the very last one, you're gonna cut that one individual strip at a diagonal by itself, just like we did at the beginning. Now I can start raveling it up. And as you can see, because we had cut our string, our plastic bags in a, that specific way, I am now left with a super long continuous um, piece of plastic yarn. And you can use this for a lot of different things. Um, it's just in case you don't have any yarn at home, you can knit with this, weave with this, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna cut off a length. Um, a, good in, a good length to use is probably the length of your arm. And I'm just gonna twist one side 
and push it through. Now I can make another aglet if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to be stubborn and try and do it without an aglet. Uh, mostly because I don't know where I put my tape. So again, we're going from the middle outside through the inside to one of the other holes. I'm just going to pull it out. So again, middle outside to one of the other holes. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail through my middle. And then I'm going to cross over, skip my middle, and sew from the outside to the other hole. So now I'm going to do my last step, which is to push it back through the middle. And it's going to take me a moment. So let's push it through. And if you notice right now, my string is on one side and if I tie it, it kind of works. I mean, it'll work fine, but it's not. As so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slide it and make sure that I'm encasing the middle string with my two ends. Um, last thing to do, tie and there you go a hardcover fancier version of our three hole book. And again, you can make it whatever size you want. I made this mini book that's also hard covered and fancy. It's, um, it's great because it uses less material, but it gives me something to work with. Um, I hope you guys enjoy.